Steroid side effects, kidney versus heart. Now, these are two major steroid side effects that are long-term that I don't see people talking about as much as it is actually prevalent. A lot of things are happening to these bodybuilders, these old school bodybuilders, and you guys don't know about it, but they're having some serious kidney and some serious heart disease problems. And the responsible use of steroids can mean no side effects and tremendous increase in the quality of life. Irresponsible use of steroids can mean major side effects for the heart and the kidneys and other organs. This video is for edutainment purposes only. This is not medical, legal, nor any other type of advice. Don't do what we do, we're crazy people. Trevor, if we wanted to prioritize sparing our kidneys or sparing our heart, which steroids would we use? Which steroids are most harmful or most or least harmful for each of those organs? Just clarify real quick. A lot of kidney issues are due to the excessive diuretic use. If you looked at some of the shows like the Europa shows, they were doing these every two, three days apart, taking Lasix nonstop, I mean injectable Lasix. So let's just take that out of the equation because a lot of them had kidney problems due to this only. But now getting into the steroid uh, parts of it, it's really easy to categorize these, basically just say androgenic and anabolics. So testosterone, we'll just go with testosterone. Anything in this category is going to have more detrimental effects to the heart and things relating to heart disease, cholesterol, and things like this. Now going over into anabolics, you're going to go into kidney problems. And the whole reason for this is nitrogen retention blood pressure is another thing but nitrogen retention and how your body filters and recycles nitrogen and protein and whatnot in your body this puts massive stress on your kidney and then to top it off blood pressure weight gain excessive consumption of protein that we don't need that bodybuilders do that's gonna basically stimulate it and exacerbate the side effects when you're on an anabolic just keep those two categories in mind it's pretty simple categorize it that way there's a little more to it but just think of it in those two ways let's give an example of a primabolin or deca or anavar mm -hmm. these are anabolics they're less androgenic and that's why people choose them because they have less side effects. Mm -hmm. But you're saying these ones that have less side effects overall could have more side effects on the kidney because you were telling me like on the DECA cycle, I'm doing DECA only and DECA is anabolic and it's less androgenic. Right. And so it has less side effects. But at the dosage that I did over the last three weeks, which was 2,500 milligrams per week for an experiment, you said that's gonna cause a lot of kidney damage because of the dosage. Another thing too, DECA has a tremendous amount of side effects, just no one talks about it. Or they say just water issues, but you have to take into consideration too, you have water retention from Nangelone, but where else does water retention go? Not just subcutaneous. And you have water that sits around your heart. And then the, the nitrogen retention from Nangelone too, that's what's putting the pressure on the kidney. And then you're putting water around your heart, which is increasing your blood pressure, which makes your heart pump harder and harder. So when it works harder, now your blood pressure goes up, which strains your kidneys even more. And then on top of it, what you don't see is the nandrolone and its connection with atherosclerosis. You look at hardening of arteries and whatnot, you also get that from it. People talk about nandrolone because it's for humans and how safe it is as an anabolic. Well, if you don't take care of those side effects, you're not seeing what's actually happening. Now, Primobon, even though I talk a lot of good about Primobon, does the same thing with the kidneys. It's so good at recycling nitrogen and keeping protein synthesis and the way it's going. You are stressing your kidneys tremendously over testosterone. And when people take more and more and more testosterone, the only thing you're doing is causing side effects. You've done enough with testosterone, there's a threshold. And then the rest is water retention. You're getting it again in your heart, around the body subcutaneously. There's only so much testosterone can do in your body anabolically. When you start increasing these, that's when you start causing all this pressure on your heart. When you talk about androgens or androgenic compounds, they're also causing the heart to grow more so than something like an anabolic. The androgenic steroids have more outside effects when it comes to these type of things than the anabolics do. Things like Anavar though, although yeah, it would be harsher on the liver, it would have to be at such a high dose because the anabolic activity of Anavar is so low, that threshold has to go up even higher. So Anavar isn't too toxic when it comes to the kidney at the doses being used. And then once you start getting up and beyond a certain amount, that's when it starts becoming more toxic to the kidney because of the anabolicness of it. But again, it's pretty much safe for that. 
They've done these for decades, at least two decades or three decades with Anabar and having very low problems whatsoever with anything, including kidney. And that's because the low anabolic activity, even though it is an anabolic, it's dose dependent anabolic to a certain point and you have to take enough of it for that to happen. What's pretty cool is you could design a custom steroid cycle based on what health issues or health concerns that I had. So if I said I have a concern about my heart, it sounds like you could design a steroid cycle around prioritizing not contributing any damage to my heart or not contributing any damage to my unless it's, kidneys. Unless it's plaque buildup, things like that. If you have plaque buildup, that's a side effect of diet, steroids, and genetics. Once you have plaque, it's really hard to get rid of it. So if you're coming off steroids completely, and taking care of it before. But anything other than plaque, yeah, you can basically maneuver around things. All Real right. quick question, how do, how do you get rid of the plaque? Just for somebody like me who don't understand it. How to get rid of plaque on the arteries, there's procedures you do in the medical field and it's basically trying to scrape off plaque from an artery. In terms of dieting, it's exercise and eating clean. You know, you hear that term clean, but it's things basically to lower it and actually having a higher fat diet with good fats and increasing your good cholesterol to take away some of the bad cholesterol. There's a bunch of things like that. Having a high carbohydrate diet and a lower fat diet will make that a lot worse. So you kind of want to go the opposite and do more of healthy fats coming from whole food and a lot of good exercise, cardio. Cardio is amazing. And so you would do the cardio with the diet and the weight training, you would just come off the steroids. Who knows how long that would take. You would have to do multiple visits and do your scans every six months, three to six months or so, and just see how effective it is. And then okay. you would know if they're going to operate and try and scrape those out or not. Be swole and swole, my friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.